11th, 2020, uh, electronic meeting of the Ann Arbor Historic District Commission. Uh, the meeting is being held electronically to protect public health and safety due to COVID-19 virus and to comply with uh, orders issued by the governor, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Evan, Services. Evan, you said it was the December meeting right at the start. You want to clarify that for the recording? Reading off my script here, John, I apologize. Uh, yeah, this is the January uh, 14th uh, 2020 electronic meeting of the Ann Arbor uh, Historic District Commission. Do I need to go back? I'm not going to read all that other stuff. Um, we intend to conduct this meeting similarly to an in-person meeting. However, please be patient if there are technical issues. Public comment will be via telephone only. Speak uh, during any of the public comment opportunities. Please call 877 853 5247. That's toll free. Or 213 338 8477. And enter meeting ID pound 951 9476 7203. This information is also available on the published agenda, in the public notices section of the city website. And on the broadcast of this meeting, it's on CTN channel 16, AT&T channel 99, and online at www.a2gov.org backslash watch CTN. Ms. Thatcher, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Rockland. Here. Commissioner Hall. Here. Commissioner Epperson. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Fortner. Here. Commissioner Beeson. Here. Commissioner Quijano. Here. You have a quorum. Okay, thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Uh, approval of the agenda, item C. Are there any additions, deletions, or changes to the agenda? Not no, not for me. Okay, hearing and seeing no objection, the agenda is approved as presented. We'll now go to uh, agenda item D, public comment. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about an issue that is not listed as a public hearing on the agenda. To comment on such other preservation matters, please call 877-853-5247 or 213-338-8477 and enter meeting ID pound 951-9476-7203. This information is also displayed on the meeting agenda and video feed. City staff will select callers that have, quote, raised their hand, end quote, one by one using the last three digits of your phone number in order to electronically raise your hand uh, to indicate your desire to speak, please press star nine on your phone. You will hear an automated announcement that the host is allowing you to speak. When speaking, please move to a quiet area and mute any television or background sounds so that we may hear you clearly. Please state your name and address at the beginning of your comments. Okay, we're going to move to agenda item E, unfinished business. We'll, uh, it's E1 at 501 North State. This is a returning item from the December 10th HDC meeting. Ms. Thatcher, will you please give us an update on this application? Certainly. On slideshow. There we go. All right. Uh, 502 North State Street, State Street Historic District. At last month's meeting, the HDC denied uh, this application for a new front door and for the exterior stair enclosure that had been installed without a certificate of appropriateness. The HTC had design concerns and decided to revisit the application uh, once new drawings were submitted. 
Um, the applicant has provided new drawings for the stair enclosure roof, which I'll show you in just a sec, but nothing's been received on the new front door. Um, there's a separate suggested, suggested motion uh, if you want to see how you may be able to word that. Um, uh, that, would, that would provide for the work um, for the front door work to be remediated. Um, I've also attached last month's staff report to the, to the, um, the memo uh, that came out. Same standards and guidelines still apply. And so I'm not going to go over those again. I'm just very quickly going to go through here. Um, the review committee did stop and see it. So now we've had four pairs of eyes look at the structure on the front door. And here's the revised drawings. You'll see that the walls have been removed. There's an interior wall back here. The, that would be the south wall. There's a north wall that would be here. And there's an east wall on the back side that are all proposed to be removed. And a pretty simple guardrail is proposed to be installed. Um, it's not shown in the back here, but it would also have to go across the back. Uh, this is an aluminum railing system that would match the railing system that's already installed on the non-original front porch. So you'll notice that this little curved piece of trim here, um, sort of craftsman-esque, has been left on these drawings. Um, there's a section provided. And um, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's taking the three walls off and allowing more transparency uh, to be able to see the stone foundation of this house um, while leaving uh, this bit intact. There's not really detail on here saying how the corner posts, oh wait, actually it does say, it says new four by four wood column sheath with one inch, uh, one by cedar boards, which may be what's there already. Uh, but the applicant can um, uh, clarify that if you would like him to. And really, um, I, I don't have much more of a staff report because we went over so much last month. Um, but I do want to uh, remind you that it was standards two, nine, and 10 that best applied and the guidelines for entrances and porches, additions, and building site. That's it from me, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioners Quijano and Epperson, uh, does the re uh, review committee have anything to add? Um, Anna, do you, do you have anything you want to um, add to it? I guess we can just reiterate. There were a couple of things that we were discussing on site. Um, you know, I guess trying to look to see how far out it actually comes compared to the, um, you know, bay or window there, the pop out. It, it does step sit back a little bit, maybe about a foot or so. So it's not in line. Um, there were some, we had, did have some questions about whether or not the, the columns were going to remain sheathed and if the one wall at the, um, that abuts at the porch would actually remain or not. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, just trying to think if there's some, anything else additional overall that wasn't discussed. Um. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, just just a few other items. Uh, just, uh, when we were looking at how far the the entrance of this covered area sticks out, and really relating to the the existing concrete steps that are there, um, I don't know if the drawings that were submitted. I don't remember how many treads there really are. There it looks like there are more in the drawing than I remember, but. We talked about how the concrete treads look deeper than maybe a 12, uh, 11 inch, 10 or 11 inch uh, requirement, but given the quantity, I don't think even if you were to reconstruct those, I don't know if you'd gain enough to pull back that um, entrance of the, the covered space enough. Um, the other thing is in, in this photo, actually, on the right hand side, the portion of wall that Anna talked about that we were questioning whether it was going to remain or not, 
I don't know if you can see it in this, but towards the, the front face of the building, but on this partial wall, there's either a, a light switch or a timer, some sort of electrical component that's installed there. Um, and we had a question of where that would be relocated or what, not knowing what that was for. Um, we also walked up Kingsley, which is the cross street, just to look at some of the nearby buildings to see what, if any side entrances were comparable to this. And it was really just a kind of a mix, mixture of conditions, nothing that really related directly to this um, mm -hmm. at this property. So. Okay, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn off uh, your video if possible and provide your name and address for the record. And do you have anything to add to the staff report or review committee report? Uh, uh, my name is Rob Fowler. Um, and the, uh, the, the arch to the opening, I, I mean, we're happy to square that off also. Um, I, did, I did make them aware, and that they are aware as far as they, they know they need to do something with the new front door. But I was trying to keep uh, the entrance is, is sort of in my ballpark to make this um, fly with with the city, and then uh, they'll they'll provide paperwork to, for approval for the uh, the front door to get that uh, where it needs to be. All right, Rob. Is there anything else? Um. Uh, and again, I'm I'm open as far as to wrap with wrapping those posts. You know, whether if you'd rather see them painted, uh, I can I can um, I can make that happen, or, or the cedar as is. Uh, I mean, we're pretty open to to you know whatever it takes to uh, to make this work. Okay, um, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? Uh, I guess just to start off, Rob, some of the questions that were brought up uh, during the reports here. Um, if the, the, that partial wall that's closest to the um, to entrance, the porch, the porch area, okay. if that, if all of that is being removed, there's kind of wood cladding on the interior of that covered space, but then uh, kind of the vinyl siding on the exterior, um, is all of that going away or? Well, I mean, the, the part that's up against the porch, I mean, if uh, I guess I could take the, the wood off and, and put siding back on there. I mean, we'd like to keep, so we have uh, a way to keep our electricity to, um, yeah, to make the, uh, and we have uh, lights for those stairs to make them safe and, uh, Mm -hmm. we, you know, so we'd like to keep that if possible. I mean, I, I guess I could take the the tongue and groove off and and uh, put vinyl siding on there so it matches the house, um, which probably makes more sense now since I think since it's going to be open. You know, that that wood's going to be. Uh, um, it, it's not really going to flow with the rest of the house when once the uh, exterior wall is uh, removed. Okay, so you would, just to clarify, you would like to keep at least that portion that's near the, the front porch. Yes, but I could change okay. it to vinyl siding to match the house. So it would blend in more with, with the existing house, if that, if that uh, would help. Okay, well, that's good, good to know. Um, I guess that maybe that'll tie into maybe some discussion items later of how the, the columns themselves are finished and um, I'm not sure if other commissioners want to comment on that as well. Um, and then you, you answered the question of the, that's electrical connection over there is related to the light on the inside. Correct. Okay.
Thank you. Okay, uh, any other questions for the applicant from commissioners? Not seeing all of you, but I think one would have spoken up by now. Okay, so we'll move on to, um, I'd now like to open up the public hearing for this item. This is an opportunity for persons to speak to up to three minutes on this application. Kristen, do we have any callers? No callers. Okay. Just verifying here, any other commissioners with questions? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing portion of the application. Uh, would any commissioner like to make a motion on this app? Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. staff, Jill, yes. Uh, can I just say one thing? Um, in the suggested motion, this is the leftover one from the last um, applicant from last month's application. So uh, if someone wants to use this, be sure to put something about um, the completed work as revised for this meeting is compatible. So as not to confuse it with last month's, which was denied. Thank you. Great. Okay. So is there a commissioner that would like to make a motion? An attempt at that? Commissioner Rockland. All right. So I'm going to read from the, um, you, Joe, you, you sent out a, a, a memo that, came after the first memo, should I read from that one? Or doesn't it matter? Doesn't matter, they're both okay. the same. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna do the stair enclosure motion first. Uh, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 502 North State Street, a contributing property in the old Fourth Ward Historic District. For the prior installation, of an exterior basement stair enclosure with um, based on the updated drawings. Does that work? Okay. The completed work is compatible in exterior design arrangement and material to the building and the surrounding area and meets the secretary of the interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards two, nine and 10 and the guidelines for entrances and porches additions and building site support okay hey, that was moved by commissioner rocketland and there was a second by commissioner white let's move to discussion uh, is there any discussion on the motion commissioner epperson um yeah so i I think some of the questions that were answered regarding the um, that sidewall and the electricity and um, maybe some of the clarification that wasn't completely evident in the drawings that um, all sides will be open except maybe with the exception of the, the short wall by the, the porch. Um, I think are, are all improvements. Um, I think some of the things that um, I'm still reacting to a little bit are the the overall massing and scale in comparison to um, I guess the rest of the house but also the the location of the um, covering itself so I think some things that have been mentioned are potentially not cladding the the posts in the cedar which would make them seem a little bit less um, would reduce their massing a little bit and maybe squaring up the that front board getting rid of the curve so it match it doesn't have a give a nod to another um you know arts and crafts type building where this building is definitely has more of an italian eight feel i think those things would be other additional improvements um that would kind of help limit the the size scale and relationship to to the remainder of the house um, I think one of the things that we did discuss also on site with that sidewall at, at the porch is that if that is open, 
Um, Commissioner Kiana pointed out that there could be an additional ice and water infiltration down into the steps, which could cause additional problems, which is what we're trying to remedy. Um, so I'm a little bit on the fence as far as, you know, how that gets removed. I do think maybe siding would be a little bit better, more appropriate if that whole material is going to be exposed, but I think that's something that's up for discussion. So those are kind of, I guess, my thoughts. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Everson. Uh, any other uh, discussion? Um, I, I would just like to agree, I guess, on record with Commissioner Epperson's comments that um, it, removing those walls do help minimize the impact of this uh, somewhat necessary structure uh, for safety and weatherproofing. Um, and that, yeah, if we could straighten that that trim board at the front just to minimize visual distractions in my mind, uh, what of this feature that is more prominent than I think we typically would prefer um, at the primary elevation of the building, um, just minimizing that visual impact and if if p possible yeah if the one by cedar boards aren't really needed on those co wood columns i don't know if those are i would hope that they're pressure treated but um, i don't know you know again reducing the the size of those columns um we even talked about you know could you could you paint the wood that remains uh, a color that blends more with the the vinyl siding so that again it doesn't stand out as much because it's it's the only wood tone on the building as well um, so again minimizing that impact thank you commissioner Quijano. uh commissioner rockland is raising a, a quiet hand thanks evan um so yeah, I I agree with um, I agree that this is better uh, from a massing standpoint. I guess there's been comment that maybe it's it's not good and good enough. I, I guess what I'm seeing is like a, a good a, a much better attempt, and um, I guess I'm going to say that it's good enough. With one caveat, is that I don't really understand what's going on with the wall that touches the house. Let me get back to that. Um, for the posts, I mean, yeah, you're going to use pressure treated four by four posts, but if you don't wrap those with something, it's not going to have a real nice finished look. I think that you need to wrap those if you want it to look finished. Um, and so I guess I'm fine with, with the one by wrapping, um, and I appreciate it. Uh, but I think that the choice of, um, of a natural cedar as the material there, I like using natural cedar on a historic building maybe uh, to differentiate an addition. But in this case, um, since it's, you know, we're, we're trying to, to maybe not, uh, not bring so much attention to it that I, I would, um, I would say that for me, paint, painted one by cedar would be um, would be most appropriate in this case. Um, I don't know what to say about the the arch. Um, if the owner wants an arch, um, if you know, again, if we're going painted, if everything's painted, then then that sort of tones it down too. I again, it's a nice detail maybe somewhere else on a on an addition that's not in the front open space. Um, but if the owner wants it, I, I sort of am, am on the, I'm, I'm having a hard time saying that the standards, you know, don't allow that. Um, but I, I, I recognize the arguments made. Okay. And so then back to, um, the massing, which I think is, it's, it's as open, you know, as, as it can be. I just don't, I don't, so the elevation that we're given is the perfect elevation we can see the house, the, but it's just not drawn. I, 
you know, to me, when I look at that elevation, I just see that the, you know, the, um, the wall touching the house is it looks like a solid wall to me. Um, I know it's not. We, the, uh, Rob, you talked about it. Um, can you please again describe your proposal? For it, I, I'd like to ask another uh, a question. I guess can can the app is the applicant available? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you describe that elevation? What what materials and what it looks like? Since we don't have a drawing there. Okay, are we back talking about the short wall by the um, concrete porch? Yeah, the wall that the wall of the enclosure that touches the existing. Oh, okay. So the actual house wall, as far as um, that, we'll see once we. Uh, there, once that we... wall. Yep. <laughs> what, what will I see if I, I'm I... standing at the handrails, looking over the handrails, you know, down the steps, and in front of me? is the existing house. What do I see there? I think the best thing that we're going to do is, uh, is change it back or change it to a vinyl siding. So, it, so when you look through there, it looks like the rest of the house, it doesn't pop out. And, uh, you know, they're just trying to seal up the gaps between the house and this, this, this porch. So the water doesn't come running, you know, down there. But again, um, once this thing goes away and it's all open, I think we should just, side it to match the house so everything blends in um so that nothing jumps out at you when you look at it so what i'm seeing there as wood uh tongue and groove wood you're saying you, your proposal is to change that all of that there to um to siding Yes, well, I mean that way. When now that the the wall with the windows will be gone, yeah. Um, so when you look through there, it's going to look like the rest of the house. Nothing's going to jump out at you to say that this is different. And then why why does that have to extend all the way? I don't know why you need that wall at all. Can you explain why you need that wall at all? Why can't that just be open? And so when you look through there, you see actual house, not uh, enclosure. Honest, I I don't know what's behind there. Yes, uh, like again, I did I didn't build this structure. I'm just trying yeah. to help the owner out to get a permit and get it uh, to meet the city's uh, requirements. So. I don't know what's behind there. I mean, I guess we can open it up and then I can contact Jill to, to see what, what she uh, thinks. Um, but I, I honestly don't know what's behind there. I mean, it, it probably could be opened up at least from that front post back to the front corner of the house, if that makes sense. Yes. There's, there's still going to have to be some, I'm sure there's some sort of beam up there to carry that roof weight that's sticking out you know, from the house to that front porch. Right. You'll have a ledger against the house and then a beam that would extend to the front post. Right. Mm -hmm. But that Jill, way it's more like an open, just an open shed. Roof. Jill, do you have a picture from the other side, from the porch side, so we can see right, oh yeah, right there. Oh, is it? Siding? It's vinyl siding all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there might be a baseboard or something, base trim. I'm going to piggyback on this discussion, actually, <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, so I, I guess when we were speaking earlier, Rob, I, I maybe misunderstood your response. So I thought you were proposing to only maintain or only keep the portion of wall that we're looking at in this photo from the column to the front face of the of the house that the portion of of that wall that extends from the front face of the house backward or back mm -hmm. towards the basement door um, was going to go away so that we would see the original or 
what remains of the original house. Um, yeah, I, the, main I, house wall. the the wood wall. So when you, when you look from the the north elevation through, you'll see that. And I, I th think I can. Again, it's it's hard telling because I wasn't there when uh, I don't know why they, why that part was covered up. To be honest with you, so mm -hmm. I think it's where the steps start. The steps start. There's an angle we can show that the steps start right at the very beginning where the posts are. Uh, but mm -hmm. you, right, you have to you you want to keep that covered. But the keep going. There's another place where you can see the steps. There you go. See the steps start there. Right, but I don't know why that requires the portion of wall uh, on the north side to extend all the way. Uh, trying to cover the steps. See, if you if you leave that open, this, if that's open, then that you you what rain and snow comes on the steps. So I think the whole purpose of that is just to cover the steps. That front portion. Yeah. But not the. Not, this is not the angle. There's a different mm -hmm. angle. So there was another picture. Show the picture. See there, that's the first step right there at the front. That's the first step going yeah. down. If you keep that covered, if you're going to try to move that back to the, to the front of the house, then that's, those steps are not covered. Yeah, but if you're going to have a railing on the other side, there's not going to be really much difference if there's a railing on that side in terms of what's mm -hmm. getting down there. I'm thinking right. about snow and sleet. Right, but um, if you have a railing on the other side, they're going to have to open that up. It's going to a little bit's going to get down there on that side too. Yeah, it's not like on the on the where we do see on the north elevation drawing that was submitted, where they show the new aluminum railing system. There's there. no curb shown at the bottom. So anything that's on that, you know, adjacent concrete surface could potentially spill down, which would be comparable to the, the uh, porch edge if there was a railing up top and, and no curb. I guess what, what would have been helpful in this discussion is in this north elevation drawing, the if the house wall that we sh would see beyond, if all of that um, wall was truly to be removed, what what we would see there? There's no delineation of front of house, um, you know, if that wall was removed. So. It's a little hard to say. No, 100%. You don't see the corner board coming down at that corner. It looks mm -hmm. awkward. So if you had the siding back like there the, in the corner board. Yeah, the top of stone. Yeah, or something. make a huge difference. Yeah. Agreed, yeah. Commissioner Quijano. Would the applicant be open to having that, the porch side, removing the cedar wall and having the siding of the original house and the corner board come down and then opening up so you just see railing there and you can see the historic structure? Yes, we'd be open to that. Okay. Great, I have, I feel good about that. Just, 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 I'm getting thumbs up from a lot of commissioners mm -hmm. here. Agreed. So, yeah. Any other comments or discussion items? So, is that clear in the motion then, Commissioner Rockland? Mm -hmm. I better add something. Yeah. Yep. Are there before Commissioner Rockland rereads that? Are there any right. other uh, revisions? Well, personally, I, yeah, I personally would concerns? feel better if it was painted rather than the cedar. I don't know how other commissioners. It was talked about a little bit, but does anyone else have a comment on that? I, I would support that. Yeah, we could paint it the same color as the siding. So again, we try to camouflage this as much as we can. I support that. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting I some. I support it being painted. Okay, I'm Sorry. seeing 
positive feedback there. So I think we'll leave it in, unless anyone else has anything else to add. I'm not seeing any. So Commissioner Rockland, I'll let you attempt uh, adding that in. Is that okay? Sure. Great. Okay, so add, um, I guess I, I already added, uh, you know, with the updated drawings, and um, after that, we can say um, with all um, wood trim to be painted, um, I guess wood cladding or trim and trim and or. Okay, and then um, the um, the wall that touches the house shall be open from the front of the house to the post. Support. Does that encapsulate the comment enough or should I? Can you add something about the seeing the historic siding and corner board to the, mm. it, it, you notice the historic structure there. Okay, so I said that that wall should be open from the house to the post, but really what's what we're asking for is that that entire wall be as open as possible to show all of the historic material um, within the enclosure space. I'm Does that, that sum it up? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Report. Technically, Commissioner Beeson, I think you, maybe you're trying to say something here. Yeah, I guess technically it's more of showing the historic massing because the only historic materials are the stone, the vinyl sure. siding isn't. <laughs> sure, good point. It's it's really any good point. remaining historic materials uh, and entire massing. Great. Commissioner White? Support. Okay, so then we'll move to a vote. Uh, all those of, in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion carries. Your application has been approved and you will receive a written notice from staff. Please note that you must apply for any required permits for the, uh, from the city before beginning uh, work on your project. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks, Rob. We got to the front door, right? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> okay. Front door. Uh, you want me to so read? We need someone to read a motion, right? Commissioner Fortner, is that what you raising your hand? To? Sure. Okay. Thank you. I move that the commission find that the replacement door built and installed without permits at 502 North State Street does not qualify for a certificate of appropriateness and that the property owner is ordered to replace the door with a door that meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines and receives staff approval via a new Historic District Commission application within 60 days. Support. Okay, so that was moved by Commissioner Fortner and it was a second by Commissioner White. Are we discussing this? Yes, we are. Do we have any discussion? on the motion. Commissioner Rockland. Um, I, I just want to say that I don't think anything's changed from last month and we had a discussion on it and I think we all sort of were in agreement after that discussion. Okay. Great. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, so those, that means we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion carries. Your application has been. So, do I say denied here? Is it really denied or is it not approved? Not approved, right? Yeah, so it's denied and you receive written notice from staff. Bill, you're saying something, but I can't hear you. Not hearing you. Sorry, Jill. He's saying never mind. So we're moving on. Is that right? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, I was just going to say that it was denied already last month, and this is just the action that's required okay. to be taken. Yep, I didn't, wasn't sure on that. Thank you. All right, so we're going to move on to F1. Is that correct? Are we done with Rob? Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Okay, stay Bye. safe. Bye. All right, so um, F1 hearings. <laughs> um, this is at uh, 231 South State. Ms. Thatcher, will you please give the staff report? Jill, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Jill, you're a little muffled. All right. Bear with me for a second, Lauren. Here. Is that better? Better? Okay. All right. 100% better, yes. Thank you. So the State Theater was built in 1940 and opened in 1942. It was designed by C. Howard Crane, who was also the architect for the Fox Theater in Detroit. Uh, the first floor was originally clad in red vitrolite structural glass panels. In the 1970s, the interior was divided into four screening rooms. And in 1989, the first floor was converted to retail use. Second floor became a two screen film theater. Uh, in 2013, the HDC approved an application for an elevator addition and many updates. You can see the elevator addition here on the right side. And uh, they did a lot, a lot, a lot of updates at that time. And they um, reinstalled all of the marquee lighting, all the little light bulbs that had been previously covered up except for under on the underside of the marquee. And they wrapped some of these columns in this red metal. Um, to pay homage to the red vitrolite. Uh, though all of the storefront windows uh, and doors are non-original. Uh, more recently, um, staff approved just this year a non-original equipment platform to be demolished on the north elevation um, and some HVAC updates. So the applicant is seeking HTC approval to install five signs on the building. Um, I'm gonna go through those in just a minute after we see the photos. Um, most of you are pretty familiar with this building, though uh, there were some things that I hadn't noticed about it when I was standing there, such as these cool tiles. They have cool tiles in all of the, the, the window bays um, on the ground. Uh, this is the location of the, the first sign, which would be right over these doors here. Um, the applicants have said that they're going to come in for a new storefront approval. The sign would fit in this one or a new one in the same location. Uh, there is this, this canopy overhang. Uh, it appears that the sidewalk crack right here is about the edge of the property line. And uh, so this canopy does hang over into the public right of way a little bit. Um, you can see all of the zillions of little LED light bulbs ringing it. Um, and one sign is proposed to go on top of the canopy over this bay of windows. And uh, uh, yeah. And a little pedestrian scale sign is proposed to go right here. I'll show you more on that in a second. These are just some view up and down the street. This is standing in front of the Indian Suvai kitchen restaurant to the north. And this is the view looking from the south toward that Indian restaurant. And that's just another nice overall shot of the entire building. Um, there's so many character defining features of this building. Uh, it's hard to even name them all pretty much from the marquee canopy up. This is all original um, with some very small exceptions, very minor exceptions. And then you've got the new addition here on the side. Um, the, the, the basic form of the ground floor remains, though, as I said, none of these storefronts are original and the, the red columns are um, sort of throwbacks, uh, but but not a restoration of what used to be there. 
These photos were provided by the applicant and they're helpful so that you can understand what's going on on top of this canopy since a sign is proposed to be installed here. Um, uh, you can see that there's, you know, flashing against the wall here. Um, I'm not sure what's underneath this, um, just membrane roofing material. I'm not quite sure that they know either. Um, so some of that is still yet to be determined. You can see the very distinctive herringbone uh, patterned brickwork here uh, above the first floor. Just another shot of what it looks like from atop that canopy. This is much shallower than I expected. I thought it was going to be a lot deeper than it is. Here's a photo where you can see that red vitrolite that used to be here and here. You can see that this bay's been sort of extended up and down. Um, and windows have been installed on here. These used to be exit doors. Um, but but this curved sort of feature post corner thing and this curved one uh, still exist. Uh, some more photos that were provided by the applicant that we can refer to if necessary. And here's our signage. So there are five signs proposed. First one is over the door, it says Target, it's got the logo. Um, it, fits, it fits within that sign band area there. Uh, the second uh, signs, the second sign is this bullseye, which is aluminum and um, is two inches thick, deep. So it is an aluminum circle attached to the wall um, so that it protrudes outward. Then we've got the canopy sign on top of the canopy. I'll get to dimensions in a couple of minutes. And we have two large bullseyes that are adhered to the windows and a series of smaller bullseyes and arrows um, sort of pointing the way toward the door. The, um, the existing sign doesn't really affect you guys, but the existing state theater sign is already too large uh, under the sign code. So any new signs that go up uh, for Target or any other use will require uh, a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals that would come after this process. They would ask for that. This is the small pedestrian scale sign. It's one and a half feet by one and a half feet. It's tucked uh, on the last small column here. Let's see it right here. Uh, here's some details on that large bullseye on the red column. Uh, four feet. They're all four feet in diameter. This is a roof plan so that you can see where the canopy is right here and where the target sign would be installed on top of the canopy. It's right here. That sign is very thin. Um, it's only uh, two inches in profile. Uh, it's 14 feet, nine and a half inches wide, and again, four feet at the top of the bullseye. These letters are a little bit shorter, um, probably about three and a half from the top of the T to the bottom of the G. Um, there's information here on how it's going to be secured. Uh, so the sign, uh, the letters are attached to the raceway. You can see the raceway, it's this, this large box here. And then the raceway is attached to um, a steel tube stub and um, it's secured to the building with a uh, steel plate. Um, and that is supplied by others. This is not uh, an illuminated sign. None of the signs proposed have any sort of lighting on them. This is the detail on the pedestrian sign. Again, it's an aluminum box. It's four inches wide in total. It's two inches wide with two two-inch plates, one on either side. Um, and it's attached to that non-original storefront on the top of it. So here's a, a profile of where the pedestrian sign and the target sign would be installed in relation to the larger marquee in the background. Uh, 
Uh, from the Secretary of the Interior standards, uh, the ones that best apply are number one, that says a property will be used as it was historically, or be given a new use that requires minimal change to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. Number two says the historic character of a property will be retained and preserved. The removal of distinctive materials or alteration of features, spaces, and spatial relationships that characterize a property will be avoided. Number nine says new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new works shall be differentiated from the old, shall be compatible with the massing, size, scale, and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. And number 10 says that new additions and, oops, I have one of my slides. And number 10 says that new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. From the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines for storefronts, not recommended as introducing a new design that's incompatible in size, scale, material, and color using inappropriately scaled signs and logos or other types of signs that obscure, damage, or destroy remaining character-defining features of the historic building or using new illuminated signs. From the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs, it's appropriate to install signage on the historic sign band area of the building, typically the area above the transoms or just above the storefront. Here you have to keep in mind that this was not built as a storefront, um, but as a movie theater. Also appropriate is attaching signage through the masonry joint, not masonry units, or through materials that can be easily repaired, and installing signage that's compatible in size, style, material, and appearance to the historic resource and district. Also appropriate for signs is installing signage that is subordinate to the overall building composition and placing signs to align with others along the commercial block base. For pedestrian scale signs, it's appropriate to locate them near the business's entry, eight feet from the ground, mounted on an arm or arms or hung from an, a bracket, and size not to exceed 4.5 square feet per side. Um, let me just check and see if I have anything that I missed. Um, the door entry sign is five feet by uh, 15 inches tall. Um, a couple of the signs will require, um, uh, uh, because they project out into the right of way, the city right of way, they'll require an agreement. Um, I think it's some sort of a license to uh, use that space above the city right of way, um, but that's not something that you have to worry about. Um, signs in the area are pretty inconsistent. If you look north, Let me get back up to my photos. Uh, if you look north, there's Taste of Suvai here. Amas is up here. I'd love to get rid of that sign. Then the distance, you've got the CVS Blade sign. That is a historic um, sort of recreation. Um, and then in the other direction, uh, you've got uh, no Blade signs at all until you get almost all the way down to the corner when you hit the Pattaya sign. All right. So staff believes that the signs taken individually um, are appropriate and meet the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines and the standards. Um, I do have some concerns about the total amount of signage. When I was talking to the target folks about these you know, one at a time, maybe we could do this, maybe we could do that. Um, the sum of the whole, they the, it seems like they're all on there. Uh, it, it, it may be too distracting from the historic building. Um, it's important to remember that it still needs to read as the state theater and, oh, cool, there's a target on the first floor, rather than, hey, look at Target. Oh, it's inside an old theater. <laughs> you know, we're trying to preserve the character of the historic building and make sure that that's, um, that's 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 foremost in the minds of, of people who are viewing this and also to protect historic materials. Really, when you're talking about historic materials, um, this is the sign um, that could be the most problematic in that respect because it's it's against this. This is a one story wall here um, that's um, completely blank and has been historically completely blank and is now interrupted by a sign, whereas all of the stuff on the first floor um, is not original anyway. Um, and I, I am not concerned by um, uh, if, if you if you kept all the first floor signs at all, 
or possibly some combination. Um, but, but overall, there's a lot of bullseyes um, on the State Theater, um, and that does give staff pause. Um, so that concludes my presentation. Great, uh, thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Um, Commissioners Quijano and Epperson were on the review committee. Will you please give us your report and recommendation? Um, so I'll just jump in here. Um, I think the staff report uh, was very thorough considering all the different elements that are here for our consideration um, application. Um, I believe many of us are quite familiar with this busy intersection here. It's a very prominent part of downtown um, at, and campus, I would say, uh, part of the character of that area. Um, some of the items that uh, Commissioner Epperson and I discussed with uh, Ms. Thatcher on site that weren't touched upon yet were, um, I'll kind of go piece by piece here, the, the two red, uh, curved kind of piers or surfaces that we see there. Um, one of them is proposed to receive that target bullseye that projects outward. Uh, can't really see it in this photo, but up close, there's quite a bit of scuff marks on those red surfaces, whether from bicycles or passersby or who knows what brushing up against them. So um, I would have a little concern with this bullseye that's proposed on one of them just because it's kind of within that eight foot zone of that should be clear of signage, you know, is, is whatever's rubbing up against that wall going to stop when that's there? I'm not sure, but that was an observation I'd made. Um, also, it's very close to the, the uh, property line that Ms. Thatcher pointed out, um, that joint line on the sidewalk. Um, also, we spent quite a bit of time kind of walking up and down the front of the, the, the whole theater and up to the commercial properties up to the north, looking at the variety of signage types that Ms. Thatcher described, but then also across the street, uh, down Liberty, um, almost to the the alley where that the mural that we reviewed a few months ago, kind of that far back from the intersection to see what the different view sheds were of this facade and um, what, which signs would you really take note of um, when you were there on the different locations. Um, when we were standing up close to the building, like where this photo is taken, uh, you really had to look up almost straight up to maybe catch the the target sign, the text sign that is proposed on the canopy. Um, that one, not really sure who the, the viewer is for that one. Um, uh, we observed that if you were on, let's see, headed south on State Street, the marquee would block your view is what we observed. Um, so, not sure the benefit of that. Um, and then I'm trying to think what else. I think those were my main observations. Um, and if I've missed something, please <laughs> weigh in. No, I think I think you and Ms. Thatcher hit on pretty much everything. Um, I will add, I think, just to go back to the, the signage that's on the block um, on State Street itself, both north and south um, of, of Liberty, that yes, there is a sort of a varying type or um, typo I wouldn't say typology, but type of signage in the sense that they're, um, they're at maybe various heights, they're not within the full sign band um, kind of area that we would maybe designate. It kind of falls within the sign band area, I would say, for each particular storefront. Um, but that the, I think the bigger thing is that the signage is fairly limited for those particular businesses, you know, one blade sign and maybe a sign 
at the storefront itself. Um, we were looking to see if there was any other examples of a standalone lettering signage that that's something that we haven't seen. Um, didn't really find any. Um, and I would, I guess, reiterate the, the point that the last point that Commissioner Quijano was making that, um, you know, that the signage on the top of the canopy with the lettering, um, our big question was who exactly, I guess, is, is that for? Um, because as she stated, you're, if you're walking along the sidewalk, you don't, you, you know, you definitely see the bullseyes, but you have to look up at the canopy almost straight up to see that. You don't see it as you're driving down. You would really see it from this vantage point, mostly only, and maybe across the street, you know, along Starbucks, peeking between the trees or something if you're looking over there, but you would also see the rest of the signage on the storefront. Um, so I would say overall, it seems to be a little, uh, there is a lot of signage, so that, that gives me pause. Um, and in particular, the signage above the canopy, which, you know, looking at the drawings in comparison to the marquee itself, it's more than half of the height of the marquee. And it's, I think there's a little bit of competition that's starting to come into play in that, that slide. That's all I have to add. Thank you, Commissioners Quijano and Epperson. Uh, with the applicant, please unmute your microphone, turn uh, on your video if possible, and provide your name and address for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Heather Sexton with Target Corporation. Um, I guess my address now is uh, 1148 Oak Crest Avenue, Roseville, Minnesota, 55113. I love working from home. <laughs> also from Target, uh, Zach Kartak. Um, my address is 1319 East 42nd Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Great. So do you guys, either one of you have anything to add to the staff report or the review committee report? I can talk a little bit about just how we got to where we did. Um, as you can tell, it's a really, it's a tough building to uh, figure out for, for a retailer. Um, you know, I, I work in um, the Midwest and the West Coast and kind of my specialty is historic buildings. I've worked on a lot on two or three National Historic Register buildings um, where we put target stores in. Um, and um, my goal is to respect the, the original historic facade, but we also need to um, make our presence known as a retailer. Um, and here, you know, we've got three directions and kind of two directions you can't see it, you can't really see us at all. Um, you know, with the massive theater, that's what, what stands out the most. And we're set back under a canopy. Our door is where the theater door should be. So we're trying to make it so it's not confusing to our guests. Number one, that we're there. Number two, how do you get in to the Target store? Um, I think I totally follow at where you're coming from on the canopy sign. What we really needed there was a big blade sign, um, but we, we, we uh, were, I guess we're told that attaching to the brick facade was an, a non-starter. That would have given us the visibility from any direction, um, but min kind of minimizing our, our visibility on that front elevation. Um, so the canopy sign really was um, I would say mostly for car, um, car traffic. And because we don't have any illumination, we're set back under that canopy, our glass is dark. Um, we thought that was one thing that would catch your eye, at least when you're, you're moving in a car or walking, you might kind of be able to peek around that marquee or past the, or through the tree and see that kind of sitting there on its own. Um, 
And, um, and, and then as far as below the canopy, um, uh, again, we don't have any illumination. So we're just trying to have a consistent kind of brand across the base of it so that you know where target is and then a little bit of that wayfinding with the um, arrows so that people know how to get in. Um, what am I missing? What am I missing, Zach? Uh, you know, I think the only thing I would really add is the uh, where the canopy is, is kind of ideally where our sign would be. And due to the height, I think the bottom of that is roughly nine and a half to 10 feet. You know, we can't hang a sign below that. And so that's where we um, are proposing to go above. And as Heather mentioned, we're and Jill earlier, where we'd be attaching it to the canopy. So we're avoiding doing any penetrations into the brick so that you know, at some point in the future, if we're not there, somebody else comes in or the sign goes away, the building is still preserved. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, do any commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Um, I'm just trying to put my thoughts together here. Um, I guess one, one thought is I, knowing tra travel has been quite restricted <laughs> for everyone, uh, but have either of you been able to go to the site? Are you familiar with the site at all? Can I, I experience that area? Yeah, I have not, unfortunately, because of the travel restrictions. I've looked at it a million ways from Google okay. Maps and photos and asking people to go there and take photos for me. But, okay. but Zach, you've been there, right? Yeah, I've been there, I think, twice. Uh, most recently would have been probably two years ago or a year and a half ago. So it's been quite some time. But Okay. Um, any observations or kind of site specific things that struck you when you were there? Yeah, I mean, you know, we obviously like the location kind of being in uh, downtown area. The, the challenge that we see with the lo the exact location is, you know, we're kind of on the, I mean, the east side, we're in the middle of the block. And so mm -hmm. visibility to the middle is, it's always challenging. Um, and and also like the height of the canopy, the, you know, the urban outfitters sign that was, that was there previously was, was very small and, you know, it could easily be missed as somebody was just walking like across on the other side of the street. And so we're just trying to improve the visibility uh, while also respecting the, um, the historic, the state theater marquee. From the university side, we, you know, that's kind of, to me, kind of the toughest view corridor of the, because of the marquee. And we had thrown around the idea of putting a logo on the marquee, but figured that maybe was we shouldn't go there. Yeah, <laughs> I would was, agree with that sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we totally have vis visibility there, but yeah, but the marquee hides everything behind it. So yeah, it, that, that was the reason for adding the, the blade sign beneath the canopy. You know, it's very small, but I think one of the pictures that um, Jill showed earlier that if you are walking, I believe it's north, even though it would be a ways away, there is an opportunity to see that uh, bullseye kind of hanging just to direct somebody that's not familiar. Um, on, on the with, blade sign. On the blade sign hanging beneath the canopy. Yep. With it being a campus, there's obviously new students coming in. Um, and I, you know, we feel that there's in the summertime, there's going to be, whether it's, you know, sporting events or, um, music theater, uh, people coming to Ann Arbor that aren't intimately familiar with the campus. And so we're trying to, um, at least let them know that we're there in case there is something that they need. Um, what, one other question and then I'll kind of maybe explain why I'm asking these questions. Um, would, would you say that your primary uh, market would be the students being so close to campus or um, you, there are a couple other targets in, in the region, in the 
close region. So is, are the students really? Um, yeah, that's kind of the focus. Down, the downtown students, traffic. And then anybody else that's downtown, um, whether other businesses or, um, you know, retail shops along the way. So. And parents. So, uh, there's no. In. I mean, we're, yeah, we all shop at Target. So. <laughs> It, there's obviously no parking and so we're relying on foot traffic or people that are already in the area so sure um okay so i guess the um and kind of the reason i was asking those is that this part of town and other commissioners please correct me if you feel differently um it's primarily a lot of foot traffic um and the vehicles that are passing through this although major intersection are not flying by uh, everyone pretty much drives pretty slowly through here because of the pedestrian traffic as well um so i in my mind i think the the need for a lot of visibility uh primarily uh to be blunt the the canopy sign is where i i find issue um that one i i don't see the real benefit of that sign um and if a lot of the traffic is is at the the grade level looking at the bull's eyes which are very recognizable um majority of that facade is red which is great for target um i think it'll be highly recognizable um and you know the urban outfitters was there for probably 20 plus years with the one sign above the door and everyone knew where it was. So I don't think uh, people won't be able to find the target here is what I'm saying. Um, so perhaps the, the some of the signs would not be as needed. I'll leave it at that. Ms. Thatcher, you have a comment? Yeah, just um, one comment, guys. Be sure that you're talking about whether the signs are appropriate for the building, not whether the signs are necessary sure. for the business. Um, I, I do have notes on that, but maybe I'll leave it for the discussion portion. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Fortner, I, you had your hand up at one point. Would you like any, to add anything? Yeah, I just have a question about where that um, sign above the um, canopy is going to be in relation to the you know it looks like it's about three three feet deep maybe that's a little more um, but I it looks like it's going to be much closer to the edge to the sidewalk edge than it is to the building correct the the depth of the canopy there is just over three feet and we'd be placing the face of the sign kind of at the face of the canopy. I'm sorry, at the base of the? The face of the sign would line up with the face of the canopy. Okay. So roughly three feet from the um, herringbone wall. Yep. Thank you. Uh, any other commissioners with questions for the applicant? Not hearing any. Here we go, thank you. We all good here? Okay, so that means the, I now like to open the public hearing for this item. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about this application at 603 East William uh, public comment. May, may be, sorry, may be made by calling 877 Eight five three five two four seven or two one three 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 eight eight four seven seven and entering meeting ID pound nine five one nine four seven six seven two zero three. Kristen, do we have any callers on this application? No callers. No callers. Commissioners, do you have any additional questions? Seeing none. We will now close the public hearing portion of this application. Uh, would a, any commissioner like to make a motion on the application? Mayor 
Commissioner Quijano, thank you. Oops, sorry, I was muted. Um, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 231 South State Street, a contributing property in the State Street Historic District, to install an entry sign, a wall sign, a canopy sign, a pedestrian scale sign, and vinyl window signs. As proposed, the work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards one, two, nine, and 10, and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. Okay, so that was, uh, the motion was read by Commissioner Quijano, moved by Commissioner Quijano, and then there was a second by Commissioner White. Is there discussion on the motion? Commissioner. Commissioner Rockland. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. Um, okay, so um, this, uh, this, site this property is just so iconic in ann arbor uh it's so nice that we get to talk about it tonight um i can't believe when they did the renovation and they did the red cladding around the first floor and now uh target is going in there and it's just I, it's such a, I don't know how close that red is to target red, but uh, it seems very close. I'm sure you guys know how far off it is on the Pantone scale or whatever. But anyway, uh, it seems like a perfect fit. Um, I think that what staff mentioned um, at the beginning about, um, you know, trying to have this, make sure this feels like a first floor target going in to the first floor of the building where the State Street Historic Theater is and not um, you know, uh, something else then that is really key to um, kind of how I'm reading this. And um, I think, uh, I guess just to take a step back, I think the design, like the sign design is really nice. Um, yeah, like aesthetically, I think it looks great. Um, and uh, I, I just, um, for me, the, um, and I, I guess the other things that you were proposing, like putting a sign on the marquee, um, I don't think would be appropriate. Uh, and then also, you know, putting a blade sign on the brick um, also would not be appropriate. But I would also argue that uh, for a first floor business, um, having a sign above the marquee on the State Street Theater just sends a confusing message and just does not seem appropriate for, um, for that blank facade to then have um, a sign in front of it, even though I think it looks good, like the renderings look good, but then just when I'm looking at the standards, it just that's sort of the line of demarcation for me in the um, everything above that is more or less uh, historic. So I, I'm just leaning towards really not um, not thinking that 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 canopy sign um, in particular is appropriate here. Um, so I'll you know, just I'll hand uh, my time over and I'm curious what the other commissioners are thinking. The other commissioners for discussion, Mr. Quijano, you look at the ready. Well, just I agree with the comments made by Commissioner Rocklin um, that the that the reading of the sign band zone, uh, although pointed out by Commissioner Epperson, varies quite a bit along this part of State Street because uh, each each building composition side composition is quite different. Um, I think. For this building in particular, that canopy really delineates the, the top of that uh, zone and uh, signage for the retail portion or the ground floor portion would be uh, subordinate to that. Um, and I think we some of the standards also speak to that. Um, let's see, number, let's see. 
Secretary of the Interior standard number two stands out to me. Um, the historic character of a property will be retained and preserved. Um, the alteration of features uh, that characterize a property will be avoided. And I think that that illuminated canopy and the, the portion of the facade above that are really characterized uh, the majority of the, the theater's facade design um, and introducing uh, something there that has never been there and, and looking at some of the historic photographs that we have of, of that facade uh, showing that we don't think we've ever had anything in that area before um, speaks to the, the strength of that, that character defining feature. Um, also under guidelines from the Secretary of the Interior Standards for storefronts to um, kind of summarizing this. Not recommended uh, using inappropriately scaled signs and logos or other types of signs that obscure uh, remaining character defining features of a, of a historic building. Again, kind of similar uh, comments there. Um, and then for Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines under signs, uh, installing signage that is subordinate to the overall building composition. So that, and those all kind of relate to that as well. Um, I think all the, the sign, signage types that are proposed uh, in the other locations of the facade, in my mind are all compliant with, with the guidelines. Um, you know, they're either easily removable um, if someone were to choose to do that, uh, relocate them, or they're on portions of the building that are, are not historic fabric. Um, so I think that they, they all comply there. Um, Commissioner Beeson, I see your hand, uh, you're quiet. Uh, I'd like to second what Commissioner Keanu just mentioned. I think it was a good outline of, of kind of the approach that uh, I'm looking to take in terms of how to apply the guidelines. And it's really a, a big separation between, uh, in my mind, what is a non-historic storefront and then the rest of the building. Uh, and it's that whole rest of the building that is the large part of the historic framework that we're trying to maintain and hold on to. Um, and, you know, if I were to apply the standards uh, with an historic storefront, I think there would be a lot of problems with uh, the amount of the, the target going across the building, uh, even though it's on the windows, the, particularly the one on the bright red column. But again, since this is not an historic storefront, um, I'm okay with letting that portion of the guideline say, well, it's not an historic portion of the, of the building. Um, so everything that's kind of below the canopy uh, reads okay to me in terms of uh, preserving the historic nature of the rest of the building. Um, that one that is the, the channel logo above the canopy, that's, that's definitely one that uh, definitely does not align with the guidelines. Uh, the one that is the white reverse channel logo on top of the storefront, um, I think that one does fit within the guidelines uh, just, just fine. Um, so that's kind of where I stand on that. The, Blade sign was one that I was kind of like, this is a, it's kind of a weird one because it's so far out of the way of where the actual pedestrian flow is. Um, you know, so uh, like uh, uh, Jill Thatcher had mentioned, you know, like we have to kind of make the decision based on not for what's best for the retail purpose, but what is best for the historic component of the building. So while I look at the, the blade sign as being kind of far away from where the actual traffic flow is and where the majority of people are kind of walk, walking and venturing, um, I feel like again that that fits underneath this underneath the historic portion. Uh, it's in a non-historic storefront. So wherever that blade sign is fine as long as it's not under the, um, uh, the main state uh, meter portion. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Beeson. Any other commissioners with discussion items? I'm not seeing any. I would just add that I completely agree with everything that's been said so far. And above the, the marquee, uh, I cannot support that whatsoever. So um, I don't know if we have to alter the motion we have enough support for that. Uh, how do other commissioners 
uh, feel. Commissioner Fortner, uh, yes. Yep. Yeah, I'm in agreement that the um, it's the the sign over the on the canopy against the historic first or second floor that is not in keeping with the standard. Great. Yeah, and I'll add to just a small side note that, you know, the, the store, uh, as Commissioner Kandu had mentioned, you know, the previous tenant was here for years and years and years. And the target sign itself is, is an icon that I think people would very easily see. So in the context of the retail side, I, I kind of feel like you guys are still doing great here. So um, in context of the sort of preservation side, you know, that's us. That's what we really have to look at. And this theater is a big icon in the middle of Ann Arbor. It is at the major uh, crossroads of some major intersections. Uh, you know, during non-COVID game days, th this place is packed, uh, just completely packed with people. Um, and the majority of that traffic is really coming from the south and then crossing at that main intersection. Um, there is a little bit of traffic that does filter up north a little bit, but none of it really does come from the north heading south. Um, so. You know, for us, that historic component of it is really the marquee and that state sign and, and the rest of the, that fluted uh, brick, that kind of herringbone brick that's going back and forth. And keeping that pristine is really uh, pretty important for this building. Great. Thank you. Uh, so any other comments from commissioners? I don't know. Do we need to alter the motion? I, I mean, I can say the motion as previously stated, uh, but striking the canopy sign from, is, is that fair to say or how do Is you that clear enough, Jill? Yeah, you can do that and then um, vote on this amended well, motion. And so then you'd have to go back and make a separate motion for the canopy sign. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Bob, Bob, you were saying something? I just saying I support that. Okay, thanks, Bob. Okay. All right, so we've already amended the motion, but uh, the he supported. The first part, yeah. Yep, uh, mm -hmm. amended by uh, Commissioner Quijano and then supported by Commissioner White. Um, so now we'll move to a vote. So all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion carries. Your application has been approved and you will receive a written notice from staff. Please do not, please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning on your project. So now we'll go back up and Commissioner Quijano or another commissioner, could you make a new motion on the canopy sign? For the canopy sign? Yeah. Um, sure. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 231 South State Street the contributing property in the State Street Historic District to install a canopy sign. Um, as proposed, the work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 1, 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. Okay, so that was moved by Commissioner Quijano and then supported by Commissioner White. Is there any discussion on this motion? Commissioner Beeson. I think it's clear uh, for everyone in the room which sign we're talking about. I just don't know if the motion should clear, clearly reference what how it's called out in the drawings. Sure, so the, what we are referring to is the canopy sign is the sign the red target symbol and text name sign uh, yep, located oh, yeah. on the north end of the building above the yellow marquee there you go. Uh, band. Well done, Commissioner Keanu. All yeah. right, uh, yep, supported by Commissioner White. Uh, so we'll move to a vote unless there's any other Discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 
All those opposed, please say no. 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 Motion does not carry. Your application has been denied. Uh, and you'll receive written notice from staff. Heather and Zach, thank you for your time. Thanks for having us. We appreciate your time tonight. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Stay safe. And Thanks, you too. Yep. All right, so now we'll move on to agenda item G, new business. And we're moving to uh, the FY22 policy agenda item. Ms. Thatcher, or is, is there, what are we doing here again? Yeah, Sorry. so I don't have a staff report for this or anything. Um, we talked about it last month briefly, how the city is looking for policy agenda items to bring to the state level for fiscal year 22. Um, I got more <laughs> clarification on this though, and what they're really looking for is ongoing issues that the commission has been dealing with um, mm. and not to manufacture items that we would like the state to be addressing. So if tax credits were still out there, it, that would be a no brainer. But um, without the tax credit program, I mean, since it's already been approved, which is great. Um, I don't think we have a burning state level issue at this time. I'm sure MHPN and others will sort of redirect their efforts to to other pressing issues that they'll make us aware of that we might want to consider. <clears throat> but I don't think we have anything right now unless um, well, unless John Beeson has something. Commissioner Beeson's got something to add. I would say it's not an issue, but Jill, if I think, um, you know, maybe at the state level, they, you know, they, they allowed for this tax credit and I think it would be, maybe this already exists, uh, fantastic to have some sort of information packet that either they produce and send to us and we disseminate to our local communities, um, but just something that kind of summarizes what it is, how it works, how do you apply for it, the steps and process, all that. Yeah, that's that's something I can ask um, the SHPO for uh, and recommend that they put that together for us if they're not already doing that. Um, I don't really think that that's a, a state policy no, initiative a, that would go on this agenda, but it is a good idea. <laughs> Did anybody else have anything that they've come up with in the last month that they can't? Commissioner um, Keanu looks like she's got something. To no, add. well, I mean, I, I don't think it meets what uh, Jill started off with, that, like kind of us creating new <laughs> items or yeah. something. I mean, you know, uh, it'd be great if well, I had something last time, and now I'm you you talked last time just about skilled crafts people and um trades oh right um, yeah just i don't know if there was like a yeah. program like a statewide program that could help support the trades but yeah that's not like a thing that we're yeah dying to <laughs> yeah. commissioner fortner yeah this is more question no more question for jill just around the is there anything around the utility work that We've talked about the moving the mirrors or those mini cell towers that would be helpful um, to have state. <laughs> there's not, um, I haven't heard of any policy changes that are under discussion right now that we could support, try to throw weight behind. Um, I know that all of that uh, utility work in the public right of way, especially, is really tricky and plays by a different set of rules than anybody else and and has god-given rights that the rest of us don't have <laughs> and that's an excellent thing to think about um, because it does affect us but i think we'd want to um we'd want to do a little more research on that um, put some thought behind it see if people are doing things um, I, yeah, again, I, I, I don't think that we can just make suggestions and hope that somebody runs with them. But it would be worthy. Are you guys laughing at my husband's blender? I, we didn't know I what didn't know that what was. The, some, was so he's making my back or something. <laughs> very loud noise. We got, it, we got it for him for Christmas. It's new. 
daiquiris. Mm. A little smoothie. Okay, daiquiri. All right. All right. Nut, nut butter? <laughs> um, all right. Is there anything else to add on that agenda item? Uh, agenda item G. Not well, seeing any. So we'll move on to H. Just keep yeah. it in mind for the future, oh, guys. Right. It'll come up again in a year. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, agenda item G, uh, H, the minutes. We got the uh, minutes from November 12th and December 10th. Take a look. Yeah. You guys just got December today, right? Mm -hmm. Is December or November? That came? November. We got both. We got November and December. We did? Well, that's what the the email was November, unless they're combined. I didn't see December. I didn't see December. All right, so I'm just going off the script here. I apologize. December is not available yet, so we only have uh, November. Look at November. Looks good. What uh, White's given it the green light, All right? Any other commissioners with comments, issues? I'm seeing a lot of shaking heads, so assume no. The other commissioners still studying. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so then we'll move on to agenda item I. Reports from commissioners. Would they, any commissioners like to share something with the commission? Well, we have to approve the minutes without your, without objections. Sorry. Okay. So we're going to approve the minutes. Uh, without objections. Without objections. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for catching me on that, Bob. Uh, so now we'll go on to agenda item I. Reports from commissioners. Do we have any reports? I got a report. Mm. I can share one. Uh, just as a little uh, update from the presentation that we got. When was that? Three months ago, two months ago with with uh, DTE and the gas meters? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, uh, <coughs> Evan from Corby Energy stopped by my residence and uh, was, uh, I just want to commend him. He was, he was incredibly helpful and really worked with me and we found a, a good location to move the gas meter in a tricky situation. So, and I saw him going around to all the houses in the neighborhood and I, you, you seemed like he was doing a really good job and really uh, working with the, the homeowners and understanding the, the principles of trying not to put the gas meters in uh, inappropriate locations. So just, uh, Mending Devin from Corby uh, Energy. Uh, one, other, one other thing on that, Evan, um, someone else affiliated with that project uh, let me know yesterday that they're uh, ready to submit their first, it was either 14 or 17 applications. Yeah. Mm. Um, one of them is yours. Yeah. So, so I, I was going to say that maybe in, in concerns of commissioners, I mean, this is going to be a lot of. Yeah. I. I I haven't seen them yet, so I don't know how many will be coming to the commission and how many will be staff approvals. I, I'm hoping um, you can. <laughs> Evans will be staff approval. The onslaught of the whole Old West Side's meter yeah. location. Anyway, so. Well, it sounds like if they're all handled as appropriately and. He was doing uh, a great job. Yeah, I was. Sensitively. I was, as yeah, he was being very sensitive. Yours, then that sounds promising. It does. Does, but we'll see what Miss Thatcher has to say once she gets her hands yeah. on all of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Any other uh, concern or uh, reports? Not seeing any. We'll move on to 
Item J1, Assignments. Uh, review Committee will be on Friday, February 8th, 2021 at noon. For the Friday. February 11th, 2021 regular meeting. Do we have any volunteers? I can do it. Okay, John's in. And maybe March, uh, the kids will be back in school and I could do it then, but February does not look good for me. Monday at noon, sorry. If it's a Friday, I think I can do that. It's a Monday, isn't it? It's a Monday, yeah. I don't know. It's a Monday. Yeah, it's always a Monday. Oh, okay. I can't have this Friday. No, can't do Monday. I might be able to do that one, Jill. You can, I'll confirm as it gets closer, but you can put me down. Okay, I'll put you down. Thanks, John and Jess. Yeah, Mon right. Monday the 8th, right? Correct. Okay. Thank you both. Yes, thank you, uh, Commissioners Beeson and Connick. Hopefully it'll be just as warm as the last one. <laughs> it was a hot one? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> All right, so uh, K1 reports from staff. The November 2020 HDC activities report is attached. Does anyone have questions for Ms. Thatcher? Spread out over several pages. Oh, yeah. No questions? It wasn't a very exciting month. Well done. I do have one other thing for you guys. Um, we may have an enforcement action at 310 and 312 South Ashley coming to you next month. Um, that is Hathaway's Hideaway and the Nally Music Building. Um, there's been some construction above a party wall um it's currently in private litigation but uh some a, a chimney was removed from 310 south ashley which is hathaway's hideaway and replaced a brick chimney and replaced with a aluminum vent chute and uh the wall now extends farther over the hathaway's hideaway side of the party wall than it used to um so, so we're working with the city attorney and both property owners and building inspectors and everybody else right now, but um, they're on notice that if nothing happens, we'll bring it to the next HCC meeting. Um, so it, it may or may not become your way. Hopefully it'll all be resolved by then, but I'm just telling you in case. All right. Is that related to the project that we approved? Oh, like the U-shaped thing that they were doing uh yeah they i say were, u shape it's like goes around the property to yes the other exactly side. Yeah. The, the building surrounds pathways hideaway building and they were putting they were rebuilding the the, the roof uh, enclosure to make it a room and um yeah they ran into some difficulties there <laughs> so we'll well I'll, I'll keep you informed on how that's going to move forward thanks for the heads up Okay, uh, let's move on to L, concerns of commission. Are there any concerns from the commission? Mr. Keanu. Uh, this uh, pertains to Cobblestone Farm Association and the liaison position that uh, I currently hold, although I have not been able to attend their meetings, uh, albeit virtually, um, for quite some time now. <laughs> and I don't want them to feel like they're, you know, not being addressed. 
uh, or that we're ignoring them, but I, I just have not been able to make the meetings. And I don't know if anyone else would be willing to take on the position. Um, Jess, yeah. can you remind us when they meet? So typically it's been, uh, I want to say the first, no, it must be the, it's either the first or the second Monday, must be second Monday uh, of the month because it often lands on the same day as our review committees. Um, but it's at like 6 p.m., 5 or 6 p.m. Um, typically when they hold it. And they have been doing it virtually the past several months. Um, so. and they they do have to... connections with the city, uh, obviously through the parks department and that's a pretty, that's a much more active relationship that they have as they you know, maintain the facilities and schedule <laughs> programs and whatnot, um, but. Um, they're, they're very interested um, in keeping up a relationship with the historic district commission because they want to do things right. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a, they're a good, very hardworking bunch of people. Um, so if anybody has an interest in serving on this um, for, you know, say a year or so, uh, then we can try to move along to the next person. But uh, thank you just for what you've been doing so far. I'm sorry, it's conflicting with a lot of things for you, but <laughs> no, I just, that happens sometimes. Things happen. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'd be willing to take that. That They're would be great, Kathy. Ready to give it. <laughs> okay. okay. Then Kathy, um, I will put you in touch with George Taylor. Mm -hmm. George is sort of the caretaker for the farm <laughs> um, and knows all of the members and can fill you in. Um, and and all you'll have to do is report back if there's anything of interest to the commission after the meeting. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Quijano, for your, your service there at Cobblestone, and thank you, Commissioner Fortner, for taking that on. Yes, Steve. Okay, <laughs> Commissioner Rockland. All right, so uh, any other concerns? I'm not seeing anything. So we'll go on to M1 on the agenda, communications. And I see no communications this month. Is that correct? Nope, no communications. That means we're just on to adjournment. Uh, uh, item N, I now adjourn the January 14th, 2021 HDC meeting. Thank you, everyone.